Welcome to New Game Plus. You're listening to a retro gaming podcast where three guys spend seven days playing one old game and then we talk about it. My name's Dustin. My name's Kenny. It's Nolan. And this is episode 304. And this news isn't exactly brand new, but a few weeks back, <laughs> Nin Nintendo announced an expansion pack for Nintendo Switch Online that would add some Genesis titles and the long-awaited edition of Nintendo 64 titles. We've got some big ones. Super Mario 64, Star Fox, Ocarina of Time, just to name a few. But over the past few days, actually just a few days ago, the expansion pack became available. But it's running less than Stellar. Who would have thought? It sucks. Who would have thought? People are, people are upset. Twitter is abuzz with complaints about technical shortcomings, emulation woes, and button layouts that prove that there is no God. And on top of that, gamers are paying more than double to boost their Switch Online subscription service to this new expansion pack. What do you think about all this? Well, I've heard there's input delay. And yes. that's bad. That's, that's gross. real bad. I want that service. Because Genesis and N64 titles, that's literally for me. Like, that's made for me. But if it's, if I, it's not playable, if there's actual problems where you, it's not enjoyable to play, I'm not doing it. Outside of that, I could have told you it's a bad idea anyways. Why? The N64 controller was unique oh, no, that's not and everything's problem. like mapped to work there and it's just there are certain games at least some obviously will work but there are certain games that just aren't gonna feel the they same. have an n64 controller for the switch it's new they do but but that's where it's getting the input delay do you know what if you are using the switch pads do you know how they've i don't i might get this wrong but you know how you've got the four uh buttons yeah. uh, for the nintendo switch you've got the four mm -hmm. buttons i don't know are do they have uh, letters associated with them yeah a b x and y x y okay um the bottom and the right is your a and b from nintendo yeah. 64 yeah the other two are the top and left c buttons <laughs> no and then you have to hold zl i believe and that changes the left and that changes the right and down like, and down to the you're right kidding. those two to make them different one that's yeah. a bad answer to that <laughs> get the face I'm, I'm not saying there's a great that's... answer because it's legitimately a problem that's why i brought it up yeah it's not... that's that is not the answer <laughs> no it's not um the we had oh we <laughs> Ocarina of Time and all those titles it had a N64 emulator and you could use a GameCube controller just fine with every N64 oh, well. game. The controller, get it out of your mind. Like, they shouldn't have done that. You don't have to do <laughs> that. The C stick can be the right stick on the joystick, on the Pro Controller. Use the Pro Controller. That's what I would do. I wouldn't even buy the N64 controller. One other thing that is absurd here is that, like, if you're playing Mario Kart, for example, to do the... Um is it ghost try you know when you are able to track yeah. your best and, and race against yourself um it it says when you load load that up that because that's an option obviously it says uh you need an expansion pack to be able to do that yeah there there aren't no exp that's not created yet there's no so, expansion pack so like, you no support for that at all no no you just Can't straight up couldn't play majora's features. mask so you just can't you just can't do one of the features uh that's that's required here. Okay, so it's unfinished. I'm going to wait. I want it. I really 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 want yeah. it. Are the Genesis titles okay? Like how's that faring? I I, I haven't heard as much. I would imagine be they fine. are because they already had No, they already had NES titles and, and all of those work work Oh, and SNES. Yeah, yeah right. they work pretty so, great. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to just wait. There are people from our community that are in a family plan with us on right. on that service i haven't right. moved it to the new one yet N for no reason i was going to but now i'm not i'm gonna wait because yeah. they need to fix that i want all of those things on my switch though yeah it'd be nice uh, and, and for those of you listening if you don't mind shelving out 50 dollars for unrefined modern access to some retro titles then boot up your nintendo switch and cop that expansion pack Brrr! Like in our <laughs> retro game okay. of the week. 
Dick Tracy. Overview. In 1931, yeah, American yeah. cartoonist Chester Gould premiered a comic strip about a tough and intelligent detective who uses forensic science, advanced gadgetry, and wits in his relentless pursuit of criminals. That sounds derivative. Inspector Gadget? It, it, it sounds Inspector Gadget-like, except uh, Inspector Gadget wasn't a human. Oh. He was a, a maverick. And wait, yeah, he is a part of the Mega Man. Okay. Timeline. The Mega Man X timeline. <laughs> and, um, and, and this is a full human. And, uh, yeah. In 1990, an action crime comedy film based on that cartoon strip premiered in theaters across the world. And it went on to actually receive seven Academy Award nominations, winning in three of those categories. Liar. <laughs> Is that not insane? And had, and had Madonna in it. Uh, had it had, had Al Pacino. Original music, yeah. Had Al Pacino had original music written by Stephen Sondheim, which he doesn't do movies. It had a huge A list cast. Why? <laughs> well, okay, I I can see that because now we do these reboots of different things that we've done a million times. So that was just another big blockbuster reboot. And but, so they get. But why right. has it just? Why has it since just faded into obscurity? I would never seen or oh, heard watch, people talk about it. Watch the movie, and it'll be self-explanatory. Then why did God, they win? It's, yeah. it's lovely. I love this film, but, but it's very sexist it's, and racist. Oh, it's no, got to. I'm just making just, stuff. No, up. it's got to be. Just, it's just weird. It's well, just. I think it's, it's kind of boring. Film. Like the character the, is kind of boring to me oh yeah the dick tracy himself is is pretty flat yeah. as a character it, it sure. hits it, it it hits an era of of this pulp crime stuff you know and, yeah. and nolan you you brought up that it's that it's um, you, derivative or that it was like it's a remake because there was a black and white film that was even earlier than this but I, I specifically brought up the 1990 film because a year later in 1991 a video game based on that movie based on that comic strip was released for the Sega Genesis and it's our retro game of the week I wish the movie would have been our retro game of the week Kenny? I almost, I almost watched it. Oh, uh, you didn't do it. <laughs> I literally still might. I, th I, I, I told my wife. Who I plays Dick? Weird, but if I can't not, um, Warren Beatty. Oh, yeah. I uh, who is, is he? <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably he's recognize a, his face. He was a famous actor back in the day. Yeah, the name. Oh, something. he's. He's an American actor, director, producer, and screenwriter. He he was wow. nominated speaking 15, in Wikipedia. Uh, he was he was nominated for fifteen Academy Awards, including four for Best Actor, four for Best Picture, uh, two for Best Director. Like this guy mm. was the one that you would want to to play Dick, and I bet he I bet he did good. Is that and and Kenny? When is the last time you've seen that movie? Oh, childhood. Oh. I wanted to watch it because I loved it growing up. It's a weird movie. It's it's like it's sort of a kids movie. Like they shipped this gangster really? movie about a cop, and it's PG. Um, but, but it also they ends in a. That's when they also, didn't know how to do like ratings it's really true. well. But they also yeah, it also ended in a giant gunfight where he just like mows down all these gangsters with his Tommy gun. And so I don't know, I don't know how accurate that was. Some of the some of the weird gangsters like way traumatized me. Uh, I forget names, but there was basically a guy with like no face. Um, yeah, like at all. And, um, he's and in this game. Yeah, it's, it's like Plum Face, or it's some. Plum, it's something. No, no, no. Like that. that one's different. That also exists, but he's like wrinkly. There's another guy with no know. face. That I think so. That or, guy's also in this game. It's called No. Maybe there's a lot of weird villains, and we'll talk about that. <laughs> um, okay. And, yeah, well, I love the movie. I haven't watched it. I'm worried I would ruin something I'm nostalgic for. So. Okay, great. And that's that leads us to I, I want to hear your history with Dick because I had mentioned last week that my history is just the cassette tape that I had and listened that's to funny. some of his detective things as a kid. That and I've probably seen some of his comic strips, but I haven't seen the movies. I haven't seen any of those adaptations. I'm aware of the 1990 movie. 
Right. I know the character's name. I have no other association with Dick yeah. Tracy. Okay. Totally before your time. Yes. And it was it spiked in interest. Like this was a known yeah, thing back in the day, and then it crazy spiked in interest mm-hmm. during the movie, but then t- completely fell Silence. off. And so, <laughs> not surprising that you wouldn't know about it. I I was like I was prime time though, middle of childhood for the movie bringing the hype and it being something that like was I was all about. So I ran around pretending to be Dick Tracy. I loved the <laughs> the walkie talkie watch. The outfit, the villains, the guns, the whole thing. Uh, I had books about him. Like this wasn't Ninja Turtles level, but for a little while, it was like the main thing I was into okay. as a kid. Right. Cool. Which is interesting because, like, he to today's standards, he doesn't look that cool. They no. gave him a a bright yellow jacket and a bright yellow hat. He kind of looks like the the guy with the monkey. <laughs> Curious George. Yeah. He looks the like monkey? Curious George's guy. <laughs> Um, I yeah. Mean, they're both yellow. Hey, yeah. Uh, he looks like a banana. Uh, it was all <laughs> yellow. But, but it it was all, all the rage. And in, in this game, it's an arcade-like side-scrolling shooter developed by the same company that created and developed Comics Zone. This was their first game. They also this wow. was their first credit. One. This team, I think, also worked on Sonic 2 or something like that. Sonic 2 or Sonic and, and a few others. I'm actually uh, not surprised by that. Okay. Just, this game just does a few things, yeah. and we'll get to it, but that are kind of, that are, I don't know, it just has some ingenuity that yeah. feels like a game that, by a team that's willing to do weird stuff like this Comic is, Zone. It's not as weird as Comic Zone, but it's not it's not normal. It's this a unique is a, game. This is a team that I would want to be a part of because, yeah, they in none of their stuff are they like, let's just do what everyone else is doing. Yep. They, no, they always right. are like, let's, let's do what people are doing and put it on its head or twist it or, or throw yeah. this... It Try this new thing or, yeah. or throw this difference in there. Because yeah. Comic Zone was super oh, weird, man. you know, but it was awesome. It was and yeah. Dick Tracy is weird. Uh, here, Here's the story. Wishbone. Okay, so according to the manual, every Robot. hood, thug, and gangster is out on the street. Itchy's running, gunning for you and the brow's been cruising the streets. And ultimately in this game, the goal <laughs> is to find Big Boy, which, man, these names. And the only way to do that is to find and confront his baddies along the way. And, again, according to the manual, make those stool pigeons sing. Stool pigeon? Hmm. Don't know. But. All right. I don't know what that's. That's for. what you did this week, whether you know it or not. We made those stool pigeons sing. Gameplay. It was good to be back on the Genesis this week. I just you wanna, are a I just Genesis point that boy. Out. <laughs> yeah, and um, we talked I'm about Genesis fine. in the intro. And for those of you that don't know, I was a Genesis boy. I really like this console. And so with Dick Tracy, I had, I mean, zero expectations. Probably more negative expectations than anything. Um but was surprised to see well surprised at first but it makes sense now that this is an arcade setup and you mentioned that dustin but this is like this is what you would find in an arcade cabinet like sunset riders like that kind of arcade just going right and shooting things and that format just works i i'm just wondering why more consoles didn't do that like it 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 really does feel like kind of out of place in terms of like the genre that we are in right now for this game. The it looks sh- and feels like arcade. Like um you've got the slightly large character sprite, probably not as large as you'd get on arcade, but even yeah, the not way really exaggerated, but big. And, and even the way that it plays in the sense that now you do get to take a few hits here, so it's not instant death, but still like it's like quick move, quick fire, fair, quick death. You've got three lives and then you've got to like spend credits. It's pretty much built like a like an arcade game. Even the stages are relatively brief and you've got one A, one B and one C culminating in a boss fight. And then it goes to two A, two B, two C, you know, and like even it's the, like, very arcade. The bonus stage too. Uh, oh yeah. Like don't yeah. shoot the innocent. Like, like it. all it's, it's an arcade <laughs> game. Like it straight up is. There's no it's other way to straight up it. an arcade game. And I'm on okay the with Genesis. that. I'm yeah. 
fine with that because this game plays like surprisingly fluid you the the interesting thing here is that it's not simply go right you're on one plane they gave you a background that is detailed and sets the scene but you're also shooting behind you at that uh, across the which, street basically which we know dustin loves I, I everyone should Cause it's that because i mean it's cool and it's novel yeah. but because of that one shooter where we had the plane in the background that you occasionally got to shoot oh it was a terrible game that he tries to defend oh um, the schmuck like race course yeah oh the one or that, like no there's uh, there i don't know if it was ray force but i'm it, pretty it, sure it Maybe that's why I'm good at this game too, because I it, in some way some <laughs> it, of those translates. It kind of almost feels like a shoot 'em up in some ways, only because it's got well, that it, arcade. It is feel a shoot 'em up. Where I, I know, but like he like means a, a top down, full on like a, one. Like a shooter, yeah, yeah. shmup, yeah. Um, because because it's this fast reaction kind of stuff, you know. Twitch, you get yeah. these bullets Big coming time. at you, and you've got to dodge them. You've got to duck from them. You've got to jump over them. It's just, it's very, very reaction heavy. Right. Yeah. So on it... that front plane, you have a pistol right. that just shoots Usually. slowly. And then for the background, you have a Tommy gun. And it's, it's, but, but you can move it. You said, you called it a cursor in your first play, Dustin. It is. Uh, like you can yeah. spray behind it's you and it's. Fire. Almost like a first-person shooter where you're moving your reticle like freely on the screen. I was surprised, pleasantly surprised. <laughs> when when I discovered this in the first play, it kind of blew my mind because they I'm really soft. introduce it to you well. You just first have people on your plane like you'd normally have. And then I had guys that stayed in the back and started firing at me. I didn't like, know hey. what to do. So I tried one of my three buttons and begin shattering glass from windows, glass from cars, and then being able to just mow across infinite ammo, that felt yeah. so novel and so good. The infinite ammo was such a good choice. I was worried yes. too when you first were like, do I have limited ammo? And no, we don't. That's great because when you are spraying behind you and you're moving your cursor, there's like a, there's kind of an auto aim, but sometimes you have to aim up at windows and stuff and you're like, if you ran out of bullets and you had to manage that, that would suck. So it feels even more no, arcade that bad. it's just unlimited. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mentioned it felt like a cursor because you can really the entire background, you can move your cursor uh, uh, around. So the top far right corner, there'd be no reason to. There, There's one scene where like I could see the moon in the background. Well, <laughs> I could shoot up at the moon if I wanted to. You it's not going to do anything egg. for you. Um, but you you take your Thompson submachine gun and you, uh, and, and you shoot it uh, at the enemies. Now, they try to get creative on a few different stages. And maybe, maybe I'm jumping ahead, but um, to try to shift it up, they do a few things. One, I think, is a good decision, and one, I think, is a very poor decision. Let I me agree. start with the poor decision, <laughs> and then one of y'all can talk about the fun one. Okay. I think a really poor decision is to make up a story reason for you to not be able to carry either gun into the next stage and walk around gunless where you just have to punch people there is really for a i believe um are you're told that the alley is too small so dick can't use his guns there but <laughs> yeah. all of the enemies do yeah but then they all pull out guns right away i got so mad i was like this alley's too small for that put that yeah. away <laughs> you should have been like hey no 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 hey, no. no put it up too small i will try i'm not gonna defend them i i tried to like justify it. it when i was like thinking about this when I was preparing for the episode, it is a forced way to introduce variety to the player where it's not the same thing over and over because it could get repetitive here. I kind of think it wouldn't because I really th I think it feels good. But they're like, okay, we're going to have an unarmed stage. It's It makes no sense in the story. It felt bad. It, it was unnecessarily challenging on those stages, and it was just not fun. I did not like those stages. And I agree with you. It's not. It's bad. Like they shouldn't have done it. 
I, I think the idea is there. I usually say it when it comes to platformers, but I either need the gameplay to change or uh, your character to change. So, like, with character, uh, we Metro. could have gotten different kinds of guns here, even yeah, with this one. Like, right, different absolutely. kinds of guns. Um, and, and, and But they didn't go that route. They went the route of trying to change the gameplay a little bit. So I respect that. I just don't think they did it well um, with that version. But then they had... Other kinds oh, of stages man. where I thought it was challenging, but I thought that they really did change it up well. The are you are you talking uh, car chase scenes? Vroom vroom! And oh man, they're fantastic. Like that is how you vary the gameplay. But dude, it feel it felt so epic. Like the animations that are happening and like cars coming behind you again. You're having to manage so many different things, but like. You're you're on the side of that car, shooting over the hood, ducking behind the car to avoid bullets, jumping on top of the car, getting to on the car. Bullets. It's great. It was. It felt great. like you were stuck in the middle of a of a gang fight. Yeah, uh, and, and there's brought that kind of energy on Genesis with three buttons. And they're still coming from in the for, in your foreground plane and, and in the background. So you're still, still having uses to both depths and and varies it. Mm. Yeah, that was and, so fun. And so you're you're ducking and getting on top of your car to dodge the the foreground, and you're shooting them with your pistol, while you're using your Chicago typewriter to be able to take out all of the enemies that are coming in cars in the background, and they're popping up in windows. They fit a lot of people in some of those cars, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a little bit clown car ish. <laughs> it was so on theme. I mentioned I don't know much about Dick Tracy. I have no connection, but I. Do now like you know they communicated exactly that to me tenfold and i was there for i was like in that action man and it, yeah. it felt really good i loved that break from the normal gameplay but the punching bad real bad, bad. <laughs> um in between each stage they try to give you a little bit of story beat too so they've got mm -hmm. a comic strip that's kind of a really cool thing they've got a comic strip Hints of comic panel. zone um, telling you like uh, where you're hearing from Chief or whatever and, and who you're going after next and it kind of sets up the stage um, with each three stages there's one of big boys cronies mm -hmm. that you're that you're going after and so 1A 2A 3 uh, 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 1 1A 1B 1C on that C level on all of these stages is typically when you're doing your your boss fight. Yeah. And so you are they they vary kind of, but really it's still it's an interesting boss fight. It is, but it's kind of the same thing over and over. I do wish they had done more variety with what the bosses did. Again, tried to mix it up some of them, you know, later start throwing things at you or interacting with the environment. But generally speaking, your boss fights kind of all work the same. Yeah, I, well, okay, so I, Nolan, you brought it up earlier, and it's a shooter. Sunset Rider, and it feels arcadey. Um, Sunset Rider, they had boss uh, screens. And so yeah. once you slide over to that screen, you fight the boss in that screen. This is still a traveling boss for most of these. And then you do get to a screen where it's the final showdown. And so one of them is fighting like behind a, a bar, like a Loved big it. bar with tons Lips. of. Of, yeah, lips with tons of, of drinks that everywhere great. that you can explode with your uh, Chicago piano as you just kind of mow down the, the back. But like, um, the, I, I do agree, Kenny. I do. It's just redundant because you shoot them with that. They fall down. They have so many invisibility fl or invincibility <laughs> yeah. frames. So yeah. many. Uh, they're attacking you during their invincibility frames and then you have to do it again. And your shoot shots do so little damage. It's kind of frustrating. Yeah, they, they could have shortened all of those fights by 30 to 40% and it's still been rewarding. There were there were a number of places like that where they could have tightened things up just a little. But that general idea of like integrating the boss into the level and you're still having to fight all of the other enemies at the same time, plus target them, plus jump away from explosives or once they get their own kind of tommy guns that they're shooting at you see where that reticle shows up on the screen and then dodge that it i don't know the the core mechanic of what's going on here was really unique and implemented well more on the arcade point did you guys hit a wall with this game in terms of difficulty and progressing yeah! okay good, good i was gonna say i was i thought so i don't use save states 
for the most part, unless it's like, okay, I must use save states. And this was one of the ones where I was like, this, I, like I found myself in one no, of the stages, like, I don't, I'm going to die. I have like no health left. Like I can't It's a tough this. game. It it's is so tough. And it's not even learn the enemy patterns because no, they're like, somewhat randomized, I think. And so no matter how many quarters you put in, which you're not in this game, but no matter how many continues you use, you might not be able to figure it out. And they throw, so, they so end up many. throwing so many That's the problem villains with, for me. on the screen. Yeah, you can't there, really dodge. There is some things you can do where like you learn the pattern of bullets and you learn you can dodge over them or under them. Like there's stuff like that that's learnable. Yeah, because they'll reload some of sometimes. it. You've got to like see that a bad situation is about to happen where like two people are both walking with guns and one of them's low and realize you're either going to take a hit and have to use some iframes yourself, which is not a good choice because you have such limited life or like reposition yourself and wait until the guys move. You almost have to kind of like metagame the, the like strategy to just deal with how difficult it is and fast sort of quick twitch reactions all at the same time. This is one of those games that if you wanted to be really good at, you just have to play a lot. And I'm fine with that. I am not complaining about the difficulty. I think that's good and fine to have in the game and like you said there were some cases where i was able to get through it by making some of those snap decisions and taking out the right people there were times though where i was like it's impossible yeah like you're you just you can't you can't do it's, it it's very it's very difficult i argued that the boss of fights needed to be 30 percent longer you probably needed 30% more health as well just for yeah. the game to really be in the sweet spot, I think. Or health I, I don't know. Something, right, to just deal with it. Uh, it. This game is not impossible. It's not like it made it so punishing that we're like, you should not even try to play it. Like, oh no, did you get to the end? Like, this isn't This I, isn't Ghosts and Goblins kind of stuff. You it's know? not Ghosts and Goblins. No, but, but this is hard, like a 90s game. Yeah. can be hard. One of the things that it does to help balance that out is give you these arcade-like bonus stages. If we're talking about arcade, those bonus stages are arcade out the, the wazoo, core. and yeah. I think it's so creative how it uses so your Genesis controller. Can, can we talk about the fact that it, the Men in Black just ripped this off? Because what the this is... Yeah, the movie, the main Will Smith movie, Men in Black, has a really iconic scene where all these enemy alien things are popping up and you and he's got a fast twitch reflex to determine which one are the good guys, which one are the bad guys and shoot the right one. But that's like in a lot of things. That's that's an sure. arcade game from the 1300s. Absolutely. Like. But I'm just saying that scene is iconic. It's what it made me think of and I'd I'd rather I don't know. I okay. liked that it gave you this option. It was fun. The, let me let me the let me pop up. Nope. Let me paint the scene. You've got three okay, you in, oh, well, you've got three individual screens that pop up and some of them are uh, mobsters and then some of them are police chiefs or mailmen. But and loose. you use the corresponding button from the corresponding position. It's so cool because the Genesis has A, B, C right in a row. And so your far left one is A, middle is B, and far right is C. I love that because That's good. You know exactly so where you're shooting, and it's pistol. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. You want to talk it's about really N64 cool. configuration? That's how you do it. Because <laughs> it makes and, sense, right? Like, not many oh. people did that kind of stuff. Like, I could see other developers doing a thing where you use a combination of one button, a shoot button, and the D-pad. And your D-pad. To choose. But no, like, it's so interactive to, like, you could set your controller on the table and do it. Like, I love that. It was It was great. And they give you continues based on how well you do there. So you can rack those up to try to combat some of the difficulty in the mid to late game. But still, the difficulty curve is unbelievable here. Aged. It's kind of too bad that you get some of these icons that don't become a known franchise. Because there's just some longevity problems with appeal that come with that happening. Um, you know... In, in 1990, when the movie is out and everybody knows about Dick Tracy, there's just some free hype here. In 2021, unless you're around for that era or you're like actually really old and read the comics back in the day, like as a kid, you had no idea who this is. It's a boomer. And so there's thing. something appealing about like the mobster thing. I don't know if on its own it sells though. 
I also think that cops mowing down baddies is kind of falling out of style too. Yeah, it, yeah, it's big, a little. It, yeah, you can't. Well, it, it poor taste in twenty twenty one. The noir thing is still cool. You can do that, right? But it's just a boomer character. No one cares about him. Like I said <laughs> earlier, he's just not interesting. It's just a cop. It's what you just said. It's some banana cop that mows He's down generic gangsters, and it's generic like generic cop. Yeah, it's just it ages. The gangsters are more interesting than the than he is. <laughs> the enemies, yeah. Yeah, Lips has absolutely. messed up lips. <laughs> um, yep. No, I I'm not disappointed by that. You said it's upsetting or something. I, I I'm fine with Dick not being a, a relevant guy right now. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, it's not upsetting. It just means it's not going to age as well as something yeah. that's known. There's not going to be appreciation for it, and that's just going to work against it for how well it's aged. Well, on that note, I think it's, for me, I I know this was based on a character and a whole like franchise. I don't care at all, but the game itself stands out to me as interesting and appealing, and so I think the gameplay of it makes it age better than it otherwise would because of dead meme character that no one cares about. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it, it's it's just a weird thing. I think any character or game that is from licensed material that's risky because that that, that that's rarely ever going to age well because it lives in a in an era like it lives when it came out. Right. I mean. Like it's a reference to something else. It's, a it's not exactly. its own thing. Often, uh, Home Alone, Jurassic Park, other games that we played, they do it better because there's still movies coming out in the Jurassic area, you know. But like, still, it you're you're running a risk here. But I bet during the time it sells really well, and that's what they're going for. When they create games like these, they're not trying to yeah. create games that have longevity. They're not thinking about 2021 at all. No. no. They're thinking about the next year and a half. Yeah, main, yeah, mainly that's all they're thinking about. And so you get absolutely... That's why you get a lot of really trash games because yeah, they don't true. care. They just want you to buy the game. Yeah, <laughs> that, And you will because of the name. And this came out on a, a bunch of stuff. And I think the NES game is not at all this yeah, game. not this. They released a bunch of Dick Tracy games on different consoles, but they're oh. all completely different games. Oh. Different developers made different games for different consoles. I thought this so, was yeah. a case of this came out on NES and Genesis and uh, the Genesis one is better. That kind of no, thing. Like no, we've had it's one of those that they were like, make a bunch of NES games, you do it for one console, you do oh. your own for a different console, you do it for the other one. Though one thing you did say there, Genesis is better, is typically what people say about this game compared to the other games that are of the same name. Okay. Because... In part because of the graphics. You've got, in my mind, it's not Genesis graphics in the sense of, it, it doesn't have the same kind of pop and flair that other Genesis titles do. No, I said the same oh, thing. I it disagree. almost feels more like SNES graphics to me. It, I thought, um, but okay, maybe. not in a negative way. It looks great. Yeah, they're just not going for like bright, cartoony that I so often associate with Genesis. That like over the top style. They're going for like real world ish kind of this gritty comic thing, and so they it, do it well. It felt different. You yeah. know what it is. I agree. I, I I see what you mean about the color popping and and the color palette looking more SNES. And you're you're right, actually. What is Genesis though, and why at first I was like y'all are crazy. The animations, dude, are Genesis to the max. They're extremely quality. There are like five different positions that can be in shooting, like depending on if it's behind him, across the way, over this way, over this way. It's it. They took the time to like change the way his coat looks. It's it yeah. looks so his character good. model. Is yeah, top notch. And, and in the, the mini game where he takes yes. up the whole screen, the art there. I know he's not moving. But like they made him look dope, and the car, yeah. the car stage as well. Like the animation screamed Genesis to me. And earlier I said it was good to be back on the console, and it felt Genesis to me in that sense. What did y'all think about the music? I don't think typically Genesis has a uh, Genesis has like a sound font maybe it of does. the system, but I don't it think does. it has a specific like this is a Genesis style of music because you've got so many different games. But um, 
what did you what did you think it's about the music? How do you feel? sound font? I know what you mean, and I enjoy that. It they do drums well on okay. a, on songs, and and maybe bass kind of sounds like there are a lot of like jazzy sounding Genesis tracks just across the the catalog and uh, a lot here in this one. Yeah, and it's okay. I don't. I'm not sure, Kenny. Is this a recognizable track from the movie? From I don't remember the movie well the enough to know. I know there was some very iconic songs written in the movie. In fact, there's some like well-known Madonna songs that are popular <laughs> as songs that were originally written for the film, which is kind of like an interesting tidbit. Hmm. I don't think most of this music is is like referential to that. It felt like just generic, kind of. I don't know, copy that era themed music. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I thought the music was nice and that it fit well, but it wasn't like, it wasn't catchy. It wasn't hummable. I'm not going to be like singing it later in the shower thinking about this game, but it, but it fit. Yeah. I, I wrote down that it's serviceable and varied. They, they did have different yes. tracks for your bosses for different stages. Nice variety. Um, but which is but, welcome because you could you could tell that that what you said Dustin was a reality. They knew this game could get repetitive if you weren't careful, and and did a little even, um, despite the fact that they mixed up those those sort of styles of gameplay so often. So you could tell they were trying to vary things as much as they could, which is so welcome with music too. We talked about the difficulty curve. I just want to bring it up one more time because I do think that that is going to um, causes it to be a more difficult game to want to sit down and give time to in 2021 when we all have such limited time because it the 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 first it starts off relatively easy, you yep. know, and you know what you're doing. Fairly quickly, though, it hits another level. And then, again, by 4A, 5, uh, 5B, what, you know, by the time you're nearing near endgame, and it should in quality, but it goes to one that's not, like, f fair. It, it, it's not, like, mathematically, like, incrementally getting more difficult. It's just, like, boom, here's where, for most people, it's going to be near impossible, you know? And you might get certain setups where it's just not going to work for you. And, again, I think in 2021, that is a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, and I don't remember okay. what I always say in this section about arcade titles in that sense. But yeah. whatever I've said in the past, <laughs> it applies here. Copy-paste? Yeah, no, really. I feel it's, like what you said in the past is get good. I've probably said that, and I and I <laughs> I, agree, I stick to that. You should get good at games, but um, it, it does ramp up like out of nowhere. It's that kind of like hit you in the face, like oh, I'm I suck at games, kind of <laughs> kind of difficulty. But again, I think that's okay. I think you spend some time with it, you get better. It's more rewarding in the end. That's why I like you know Dark Souls and some of the other punishing stupid things I do. If you're looking to punish yourself, it's $31 used for your Genesis, and it's $88 if you want the thing brand new. Dead franchise. Cheap game. It's affordable. Final thoughts. At the end of each and every one of our episodes, we determine whether or not the game gets our vote for New Game Plus status, which is our general thumbs up or thumbs down. It does require two-thirds of the vote to swing one way or the other. Kenny, you start. I will. Um, so this is not a great game, but it is a pretty good one. Uh, with a bit more variety in gameplay, a toning down of the difficulty, and some extra spice of some sort. Um, I don't know. Weapon upgrades, health that you could get, some kind of interactable options that sort of like just gave it a little bit more depth. This would be an absolute banger. Um, regardless of it not being great, this one is in GP status for me. Fun, unique, totally different, and I also have a lot of childhood nostalgia for the character. Um, however weird the movie is, and however sort of flat the character himself is, so it was a super fun thing to revisit, and a really unique game. It's hard, so you may not like playing it, but I think you should anyways. I just noticed my hat is yellow in honor of Mr. <laughs> Tracy. Oh, you themed accidentally. <sighs> Nolan? <laughs> okay. 
Uh, I disagree with Kenny. This is a great game. Okay, it's not just good. I really love this game. I think the, the gameplay is nice and fluid. The difficulty is there, but not not in the sense that you can't play it. It's It's very playable. I don't care about the character, so I think that you can enjoy this game not caring or knowing who Dick Tracy is. So I am surprised that I've ever played it because to me, this is one of the higher caliber Genesis games that I've played and I've played quite a few of them. I just think it's really quality. It's very simple. It's very straightforward, but there's enough variety. Those car, those chase, the car chase stages are fantastic. I think, it, I think you should play this game. It's a great Genesis title. And I didn't know, like going in, I didn't know the team went on to do great things on the console and it makes total sense and I think it would be cool if you enjoy Comic Zone and some of those other games to see their origins on the console. It it definitely shows. Interesting. Well, then that means it gets New Game Plus status. I I came in here conflicted because my experience was so whiplash this week and that totally immediately I was blown away and loved it i was like are you kidding me this is so novel this is so creative being able to use your pistol in the foreground and then your trench boom for the background is was yeah. so novel and then i hit the wall of unfair ridiculous difficulty that caused me to really dislike the game for the last 50 percent and i i think that it's even with even abusing safe states, it's going to be so difficult to get through. So I came in here thinking that I'm probably not going to give it my vote for New Game Plus status. But both of you, hmm, both of you <laughs> persuaded me, okay. and I'm going to agree with you. I think we'll probably get flack uh, from people that haven't even tried it, just because it's a Dick Tracy game and they don't know anything about it. So go try it. But for those that even tried it, because once they hit if you if the novelty doesn't do it enough, then you're going to get turned off when you hit that difficulty and be like, oh no, I'm not doing this. Yeah. I am okay telling someone they should play a game and not finish that I expect that they won't beat. Okay. Yeah. I have no problem being like, this is novel and worth experiencing and like mm. play it until you can't anymore and be willing to put it down. Or rise to the challenge. But like I don't I don't feel like a game has to be beatable for mm. it to be worth looking at. And I think this is firmly in that category because if i if i didn't believe that um i would think you're right and it's going to be too much for most which people. is which is super interesting because it's because it's my time right now to share <laughs> what my thoughts on the retro game of the week are not yours you're right we're not oh, we're not co-hosts and we're take turn hosts and I will give it my vote for New Game Plus status because of the novelty. I think they do the novelty so well. It's not just novelty, here's candy, it falls apart. It's novelty that they do exceptionally yeah. well. Uh, and, and I think if they would have brought down that difficulty, it would be a title today that's probably like a, a, a hidden gem. you know, Because it's, it was never going to be something long-lasting, probably because it's Dick Tracy. Right. But... But there's something special here, and it could have even been more specialer. Anyways, we all three give it our vote for New Game Plus status, which means that Dick Tracy is New Game Plus certified. But what did you think? We had 319 votes on YouTube. 16% said yes, it's worth playing. 20% said no. And 64% have unsurprisingly never played it before. I'll you say what I was going to say. On that? Okay. Not a lot of dick fans out there. We had a few people <laughs> on, on from the our, internet. <laughs> we had a lot. Of, we had a few people write in this week. Lyrica said after owning this game for a few years and having never played it, hearing that it was the <laughs> game this week gave me the perfect opportunity to finally play the game. Visually, this game is quite impressive. Maybe even gorgeous. Gameplay wise. It doesn't offer much beyond four main gameplay styles. Shooter, beat-em-up, car chase, and boss. Which, by the way, I think is a lot for a game that, like yeah. this. Yeah. 
I don't know. <laughs> could have just been um, one. Or, overall, I feel this game is fun in its own right, but could get old quickly. Though playing it made me go back and watch the movie. Oh. hey oh. Hmm. I, I, well, I, I do think that it's short-lived. But that's what this game is. It's not meant to be a game that you spend 20 hours on. It's a, it's a game that you, no. you're meant to spend two hours on. It's a, it's a shooter. It's an arcade shooter. That's ex It's exactly what it's supposed to be. I want to watch this movie with you guys. <laughs> okay. I that's what I've realized. No, I'll watch it with you. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll totally have a watch, watch party sometime. Okay. Clint wrote in and said, Thankfully, Dustin made the brilliant decision to declare the Genesis version as the mm. one to play this week. I started off the week with Master System version, and that port is down there with Jurassic Park. Yes, the infamous Jurassic Park. The Genesis port of Dick Tracy is, to my own surprise, quite nice. The music nails the aesthetic, and there's a good feeling of making progress through the levels. There's a lot to enjoy in this one, I think. And while it's not a retro must-play title, it's worth a look, unlike the other various and abysmally bad ports. Yeah, I did take a look at what like the Amiga one looks like, and, and that one, like, it, it's like, it looks like this one in style, like, when what you're doing, but it just looks so bad, <laughs> like... There's an NES one that it kind of has like early GTA vibes. I think you're oh, yeah, patrolling that. the city in a you're car, like driving around in, in a car. car or How is that Dick Tracy? Yeah. I don't even know well, this guy, and I know oh, that's also not. A, a computer, a DOS game called oh, Dick yeah. Tracy: The Crime Solving Adventure, which sounds like edutainment. I don't know if it is, but it sounds kind of Carmen San Diego y. Finally, Super Gamer Guy says, You could have told me we were playing an early arcade game this week and I wouldn't have known any different. Brutal difficulty, especially the further you get in, and stiff yep. controls made this feel less like a console game and more like a quarter muncher from the mid-80s. That's not to say Dick Tracy is a bad game, just that it has its ups and downs. The visual presentation here is very impressive, especially for an early Genesis title. Props to the developers for keeping environments varied and distinct, with vibrant colors to boot. The music isn't up to par with the visuals, but it's decent enough to get the job job done yep. sadly the gameplay doesn't quite match the quality of the visuals as it's marred by its slow walking speed frantic switching between pistol and tommy gun and the abysmally boring brawler sections you've seen all the game has to offer after completing the whole first section so there's really not much reason to give it ngp status beyond its novelty value you know what else they did that is like they didn't have to do this, but it's like really sick. That fight with um, the weird shaped head guy, flat top. Uh, it's in the dark, and the only thing that lights the room is when he shoots his gun. That's so sick. Like that's really huh. cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, and so maybe, just, maybe that's I'm a little so bit torn. of a of, of a of a disagreement here in the sense that like, because because Super Gamer guy said you can get it all in the in the first you nah, know in the first go. I don't think but, so. The car it's chasing? It's a little repetitive, yeah. but they tried to break that up. The punching, I'll give it to you, is trash. Like, yeah, that should not bad. be in the game. But, with, between the pistol... I, I just... I think it all boils down to that foreground, background interaction. Oh, the Tommy gun is just so rewarding. Satisfying. It's just so cool. Yeah, it is. And then to get points at the end, if you don't break any of the of the oh, glass and stuff like I that... I saw that. I'm There's like, no I do not way. need those points. <laughs> my, all the windows yeah, in my no, game I'm were breaking just... breaking everything breakable. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sending in your thoughts on the Retro Game of the Week. You can do that each and every week to ngppodcast at gmail.com or stop in our Discord channel. We've got a commentary section there. We'd love to include your thoughts as a part of next week's episode which we are not going to randomly select for guys uh -oh. once again we have a director's episode this time with Sweet. zachary zachary hey and the game that zachary has selected for us to play is none other than A 1994 side-scrolling beat-em-up for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> I was like, Dick Tracy? Until you said Super Nintendo. Well, it still could be Dick Tracy. It was developed by Software Creations and published by Acclaim Entertainment. There have been some Acclaim titles that have done it for me. I always wanted to play this game. In fact, I think it was a rental for me. Uh, one because Super Nintendo, but then two because the like whole front of the of the box art is is red, this blood red, and it's timely that we're playing it now because a movie just recently came out, 
the game that we're going to be playing oh. is called Spider-Man and Venom Maximum yeah. Carnage. Wait a minute. I have the same thought about the box art. That stuck with me as a kid. I always was like, that's a really cool box, box. art was huge. And I might be getting this part confused with a Nintendo 64 Carnage title because I believe that whole cartridge was red. No, but, I think you're thinking of the no, SNES one. It's I, the Super Nintendo yeah, cartridge. I, yeah, because I I remember seeing that and being like, that looks so dope. It just stuck with me. And I yes. I never played it, though. And I'm so stoked. That game's probably right. really it's, good. It's it's funny, guys, because I, to I told myself at the beginning of this episode, if we drew a game uh, that had minimum carnage, that I wasn't going to play it. But thankfully, um, that's not the case. Uh, so everybody get your red cartridges of Maximum Carnage and play it along with us and Zachary this week. Let us know what you think of the game in our commentary channel and Discord. Go to ngppodcast.com and click join us in Discord. You can go one step further if you want to show your support for what we do in bringing you entertaining retro gaming goodness every single week by joining us on patreon.com um, you can uh, support the show at all sorts of different levels and get all sorts of different perks depending on what you are looking for so we want to say thank you to dominic who joined us as a Yay! new patron this week for the first time thank you and a giant thank you to our huge list of core supporters are producers including the following people a marley and anthony antonin austin ben bethany fox brunt carrie captain protein dan the man db muppet francesca heim josh joey jordan justin Corey, lorelei matthew maximum mr latte is not well secret duck of evermore shauna thomas unbelievable war donis william and zion one breath boys a Huge, huge thank you, thank you as well to our director level supporters, Bro Jim, Carlisle, and of course, Zachary. Zachary. Can't wait to have you on next week to talk about Maximum Carnage. Can't wait. You can follow us on all of our social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Those links are in the show notes. Listen directly on any podcast provider of your choice. Make sure you subscribe so that you are the first to get new NGP episodes. And while you're at it, please leave a kind rating and review. This episode was edited and produced by our friend Dan Willett. Join us next week as we play Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage. Until then, I'm still Chicago Dustin. I'm Kenny. Peter Parker I need a good here. Thanks your name. You interrupted Nolan's outro. I said, Peter Parker here. He didn't miss much. Yeah, that was worth interrupting. <laughs> and this has been New Game Plus.